he might otherwise benefit from going to a more infrequent dosing schedule to drive down the SHBG a bit because you still have low free T and free DHT symptoms. What's up guys, Derek from PlaySportDates.com. Today we're gonna be talking about what you should do before using an AI, before you hop on the AI train, start inhibiting aromatase, as well as SHBG and how to manipulate it too. So a lot of people, um, they think SHBG is the devil. They also think that estrogen is the devil. You need to inhibit it. I feel like the estrogen conversation is becoming a bit more, uh, you know, well known in the community about how you shouldn't just indiscriminately inhibit aromatase proactively. Um, and even if a number on a piece of paper is, you know, double the reference range, if your testosterone is like fucking 2000 nanograms per deciliter, expecting your, your estradiol to be 30 is kind of ridiculous when you think about it. So one of the first things with AIs is like, I'm going to, there's obviously a lot of things you can dig into in terms of controlling it. Like even just getting leaner, for example, you have less aromatase expression, less aromatase in general, when you're leaner, like you have to understand the fat. In your body, if you're just a fat ass, you're going to have more aromatase activity than the next guy, which is going to consequently increase your estrogen levels disproportionately higher than the next guy who's leaner. So, you know, just getting lean in itself can make a substantial difference. But on top of that, um, administration frequency. This is something, this is kind of like the main topic of today. It's going to be like manipulating, even the dosage amount can be manipulated in different ways to impact different hormones and enzymes in your body. So for example, the standard, you know, cookie cutter TRT is kind of like 200 milligrams per week. That's kind of like what HRT clinics are kind of cookie cutter giving out right now. And sometimes it says infrequent as one shot a week of 100 milligrams, which basically what happens when you pin a bolus amount of testosterone at once is you shoot your levels into super physiological territory consequently resulting in a super physiological amount of aromatization into estradiol as well as a super physiological amount of 5-alpha reduction into DHT and a super physiological amount of testosterone but then what happens is it dips into the physiologic range and by the time you get to your next shot you know you could be like low normal like not low normal but you'd be you know suboptimal relative to the fact that you're using fucking 200 milligrams so this can be leveraged in a frequency administration uh, administration frequency context. You can manipulate this in your favor when it comes to maintaining more um, stable blood serum concentrations, which in itself minimizes a significant amount of side effects and is arguably healthier. Uh, but on top of that, it's a way to minimize aromatization and estrogenic side effects. In addition to that, it's a way to manipulate SHBG, which is what we're going to get into later in the video. But the first thing is you have to understand, like I said, if you're pinning one fat shot like once or twice a week, the amount you push into super physiological territory and get that extra bit of E2 is going to be more so than if you were pinning, let's just say a micro dose, shallow intramuscular on a daily basis. Now I'm not saying you should do that every day. Um, and in fact, personally, when I get lazy, I just do it every other day myself. I don't do it every day spot on. Like, you know, I would otherwise guide myself to, if I was giving myself advice, I'd say do it every day injections, shallow IM is kind of like what I would say for the most stable blood serum concentrations. But you know, some guys are doing like once a week, once every two weeks, once, you know, in, in Europe, they're doing like one shot of fucking sustenance on every like however many weeks. And it's just ridiculous. So like at the end of the day, like I said, if you want to manage your estradiol, the estradiol, the first thing besides getting leaner, as well as looking at your diet and looking at obvious lifestyle interventions that can help you get to a more reasonable body composition is also your administration frequency. So instead of doing like one fat shot a week, try doing getting insulin pins, half inch insulin pins or whatever, doing a shallow intramuscular shots on a more frequent basis. Doing more shots doesn't sound appealing, but when you're actually comparing it to doing like a harpoon once or twice a week, doing little micro shots that you can barely feel with an insulin pin, to be honest, is more uh, of an attractive alternative to myself, even though it's more frequent. It's like a less cumbersome experience, I guess, <laughs> and it's less uh, traumatic to the injection site too. Uh, you're using like, I use a 29 gauge, which is, it pushes it out pretty slow, but I barely, I use such a little amount of oil, I just don't care. Um, that's like barely any scar tissue compared to if you're using a fucking 23, 1.5 incher, it's like you're comparing a fucking torpedo compared to like a little, little fucking thing. So pinning every day, for example, I'm not saying you have to, I'm just saying it is a means of estrogen manipulation that a lot of people don't leverage that they easily could. I know some guys who need AIs 
when, or they need AIs when they're pinning once a week infrequently doing just one mega shot. But then when they switch to everyday administration, all of a sudden their blood serum concentrations are just stable as hell. And so are their estrogen levels at a much lower amount because they're not getting that big spike and then getting estrogenic side effects in that high zone. So that is the first thing um, that you can do to manipulate it. Just manually manipulating it, even with your same dosage per week. And honestly, you're probably going to feel a lot better doing it that way, in my opinion. Now, as far as how this plays into SHBG, what a lot of people don't realize is that low SHBG, it doesn't necessarily equal good. So, you know, you think commonly the less SHBG you have, the more free testosterone you have, which means more hypertrophy, more muscle growth, more strength, more everything. And it's like on paper, that can be the case in some to some extent. But once you get to too low of SHBG, you're so hyper, you're in such an androgenic dominant state. And on top of that, you now don't have any SHBG to kind of like hold sex hormones up to transport them to tissues. You have to understand that SHBG isn't just this thing that steals your test because it doesn't like want you to get your test. It's a regulating mechanism for androgenicity in the body as well as um, anabolic activity. It's literally what decides like which, which tissues get what hormones and when it's needed. But if this regulating mechanism is just wiped out because you're insulin resistant, your diet fucking sucks, your lifestyle sucks, you're pinning like a giant mega dose of tests like every week instead of making it uh, more blood, more stable blood serum concentrations with smaller shots. You know, you can actually drive your SHBG into the ground with this like hyper exposure to super physiologic amounts of androgens. And this is why you'll come and see guys. You'll often see guys on uh, even on TRT with, you know, a disproportionately high free testosterone relative to their total. And this is like, you know, if you compare to natural who has, you know, let's just say is producing 800 nanogram nanograms per deciliter of testosterone. His free, I can almost guarantee you, is lower than a guy on TRT who has the same total 800 nanogram per deciliter total. But the guy on TRT's free T is going to be way higher because he's driving his SHBG down with exogenous hormones. And um, on top of that, you're, you know, we're not even factoring in the diurnal rhythm of testosterone secretion throughout the day. It's not really equivalent to, you know, 800 nanograms around the clock, like with a guy on TRT, et cetera, et cetera. But at the end of the day, the thing you need to understand is... You don't want your SHBG too low. You don't want it too high. Just like anything else, there is a sweet spot. And if it's too high, then yeah, you could have a uh, you know low androgen-like environment where not enough tissues are getting delivered the testosterone they need. And you're like deprived of DHT and testosterone, essentially, despite on a piece of paper, on your blood test result, you might have a 900 nanogram per deciliter total testosterone and a high normal total DHT, but your free testosterone and your free DHT are low because SHBG is so high. How common is this on guys on TRT or guys on gear? Pretty much non-existent if you're using injections. For guys who are um, natural, it's a bit more commonplace, but still, it's not usually the norm. Um, with that being said, like this is more of an, uh, this is more applicable to guys that are using TRT or on gear or whatever. So it's kind of like what we're going to get into is the um, low SHBG too. So low SHBG, you have to understand it's kind of like a regulating mechanism, like I said. So if there's no SHBG, you basically just have like a fire hydrant exploding of like hormones essentially in your body, just free flowing everywhere. There's no way to control which tissues are getting what in what proportion. It's kind of just like, f nothing is regulated whatsoever. And the end result of that is also the hyper excretion of testosterone. So this means you need to be administering your test more frequently to maintain those hormone levels. Otherwise you're essentially excreting it out your body a lot faster because you have no way to bind them up and kind of hold them in reserve for delivering it to tissues that then need them. So this is a scenario some guys get into on um, exogenous hormones, specifically guys who are blasting and guys who are doing really infrequent dosages of TRT or they're insulin resistant or they're whatever and they're driving their, their SHBG into the ground. These guys would benefit from a more frequent dosing schedule. And on top of that, when you do bolus dosages you drive your shbg into the ground like i said the higher the androgen load the more you're going to drive down your shbg and then you're gonna have to recover that amount which it might not come back until you like lighten up the burden on your body so for somebody who's trying to maintain stable blood serum concentrations and if you have a low shbg you would benefit from micro dosing not only to not hyper excrete but also because you need to bring your shbg back up so guys who are pinning like a bolus amount once a week, you're just continuously plummeting that into the ground, getting this fucking geyser going of hormones. 
and potentially hyper excreting them throughout the latter half of the week and then being like, you know, maybe even in a subpar, like low androgen environment, despite, you know, on paper you think, oh, this is the best. I have low SHBG, so I'm just getting more muscle growth than the next guy. And so you might be getting less, dude. <laughs> like You need to be aware of this. And um, as far as how to manipulate it, like I said, just, you know, obviously this is going to come down to your own blood work and um, your own, uh, you know, how you respond to these hormones to begin with. But what you need to know is basically the more condensed you make your administration, like the more infrequent and the bigger the dose, the more you're going to super physiologically spike everything into like, I'm going to say suboptimal simply because it's not like, you know, you're basically pushing yourself into blast phase territory, like for a small period of time. And on top of that, you're also driving your SHBG into the ground, which is the literal regulating mechanism you need. And it's not healthy to have your SHBG in the ground consistently. So basically the summation is, um, you don't need to do more frequent administrations, but just relative to your own blood work and your own uh, situation, things can vary even like just because you have a certain dosage per week it doesn't mean even your administration schedule may need to differ from the next guy in order to benefit more from your personal trt protocol so for some guys you know twice a week once a week is fine they can get away with it for a lot some other guys they're not going to be able to get away with it and they're going to need a micro dose you know daily every other day um injection schedule to maintain blood serum con st stable levels, not have a super physiological amount of aromatization, not drive their SHBG into the ground too far, not get these issues, and even maintain a physiologic amount of SHBG in some cases. Um, you might even need to be doing the micro dosing on an everyday schedule, just because otherwise you're gonna be walking around with a single digit SHBG, which then, you know, you have a disproportionately high T, free T, and on top of that, you're disproportionately high free DHT, which no one takes into account. They just look at it, their total T and their total, their free T. No one even looks at their DHT or their free DHT. If you have like a fucking crank through the roof free DHT, you're in such a hyper androgenic dominant environment. It's not healthy for you, dude. It's also going to ruin your, <laughs> it's going to ruin your hair too, which um, some people don't care about, but it's just uh, something to note there. But um, so anyways, um, there's a lot of things you can do to increase or decrease SHBG too that don't have to do with, uh, like some guys, they'll, they'll literally take Proviron with their TRT and it's like, because they think it makes it work better. And it's like, bro, like I can almost guarantee fucking T, you do not need this, you know? And it's not that it's driving the SHBG into the ground. The Proviron is, has a high affinity for SHBG. So you're basically like competing with your testosterone and your DHT for binding and then you have all these freely, you know, circulating androgens, which is the only time that makes any sense whatsoever, in my opinion, is if you're cycling and you're natural and you're going into a cycle and you have a ridiculously high SHBG just because of maybe you're coming off a keto diet. Maybe you, um, I don't know, you're on metformin. Like there's a lot of different factors that can potentially give you high SHBG as a natural, but it's almost never going to be the case in guys who are on um, a decent dose of androgens exogenously. So, you know, guys who are blasting and cruising pro -viron, to be honest, I think is almost useless in every single situation. For guys on TRT chronically, I think it is almost useless in every situation for the most part. And then for guys who are natural and going into like a short-term pre-planned cycle and they're going into the cycle with high SHBG, that's the only case in which it might make sense, in my opinion. If you're going in and you're getting, you know, subpar outcomes because you have such a high SHBG on paper and you were just doing, you're doing a carnivore diet and you're just so happen to be on like metformin and resveratrol too, then yeah, maybe it makes more sense for you. But I mean, for the majority of guys, it doesn't make sense at all. So, you know, a lot of people have a misconception about SHBG and, um, it's a subject that needs more educating on, in my opinion. I'm going to do some videos on how to lower it, how to raise it. Um, when and why you would do that, if ever. Um, but basically, the main thing you need to know if you're on TRT is manipulating manipulating your administration frequency based on where you're at. Because some people, it might be fucking bad for you to be doing your shot once a week. You think it's fine, but maybe it's not. Maybe it's subpar. Maybe it's hurting your health by doing your bolus dosage once or twice a week when you could otherwise be doing it more frequently. And for some guys that are doing it super frequently, maybe you're one of the minority of individuals who somehow has a high SHBG, still, even on exogenous TRT, maybe you're using like a very, very low therapeutic amount and you still have a, you know, 60, 70 SHBG and you might otherwise benefit from going to a more infrequent dosing schedule to drive down the SHBG a bit because you still have low free T and free DHT symptoms. It all kind of depends on your situation. So anyways, um, it's a bit of a, uh, 
I know that's a lot of information, but <laughs> hopefully you followed along to some extent. And um, hopefully that helps because this is the kind of stuff, this is the kind of reason why you need an expert who's doing your TRT protocols and not some random, even if you get it, even if you manage to get a guy who gives you injections and doesn't just send you home with antidepressants or some shit, um, them understanding how to like optimally manipulate even the administration frequency or even the administration method. Like sometimes there's a guy who might benefit more from cream, applying it to their scrotum to get this disproportionate spike in five alpha reduction to DHT. There's certain individuals where that's more beneficial based on your own specific situation. You're not gonna know any of this shit unless you get a good t <laughs> get, get a good TRT clinic. So if you want a good TRT clinic and you want a uh, good oversight with uh, qualified patient care coordinators and doctors who actually know their shit and work with me specifically, you can check that out in the video description below. You can save $50 off your first treatment with MPMD50. Um, it's all telemedicine through the comfort of your own home, Skype, FaceTime, Zoom with our patient care coordinators and our doctors. Get your protocols designed for you and all the meds are shipped right to your door. So it's a way of the future in my opinion and you actually can connect with qualified people who are up to date on the most recent medical literature and um, live and breathe this stuff like I do um, as opposed to random doctors who have been aged out of the literature because they just don't follow anything because they got their... Uh, <laughs> They started their practice 20 years ago and then they're still following these same uh, cookie cutter protocols they did back then. Or they just, you know, it's so taboo they won't touch it with a 10 foot pool. So yeah, check that out if that interests you. Anything else uh, I'm associated with, video description below. Please like, comment, follow me on Instagram, at more plates, underscore more dates, Facebook, Snapchat, bitch, you, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. If you want to listen to audio instead of burn through your data on the videos, then you can check me out on the audio too. So thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.